Sony released their 24-70 G Master all the way back in 2016, and since then, it has been a staple for photographers and videographers wanting the best 24-70 for E-mount cameras. But today, we are taking a look at their new 24-70 f2.8 G Master Mark II. But how does it perform, and is it worth the £2,100 price tag? Let's take a look. This new 24-72 is the sharpest and arguably the best optically, most compact and light, most video orientated 24-70 zoom for your E-mount camera. And it comes at a price of £2,100. Whether you can justify the price is up to you. But this new lens is a worthy successor to the original 24-70 G Master and it improves it in pretty much every single way. Physically, the body of the lens has changed a decent bit from the previous generation. It is built from a mix of metal and high quality engineering plastics, and in the hand, the lens feels just as solid as the previous generation. It is also dust and moisture resistant. It's quite a bit smaller than the previous G Master, and probably the smallest 24-70 f2.8 on the market, excluding the available 28-70 options for E-mount. It's also dropped in weight over the previous generation. This new version has shed roughly 191 grams over the previous one to make it 695 grams. This will be great for slinging this lens on a gimbal where every gram counts. I could also see this working well on the Ronin 4D, as it should be light enough to work, the only issue may be the length of it, especially when at the telly end of it. Fingers crossed we will see DJI adding it to their approved list of lenses soon. You have a focus ring at the front, zoom in the middle, and the new aperture ring at the back. This is the same aperture ring system as Sony's other new E-mount lenses. This means you can switch it between clicked, third stop increments, or declicked, which will be great for video users. You can also go into an auto mode, which allows you to control the aperture through the camera. If you only want to control the aperture through the camera, you can turn the ring to A, and then hit the iris lock switch here. It will then lock the ring in place and only allow you to control the aperture through the camera. Similar to the 7200 Mark II update, the new 2470 Mark II features a zoom smoothness switch. This changes the amount of resistance that the zoom ring has between smooth and tight. Smooth being a faster, looser feeling rotation and tight being a much more solid and resistant one. There is also no more zoom lock switch like there was with the last generation lens, but when the lens is in tight, it will serve the same purpose when in your kit bag to stop it from tromboning about. The lens is its most compact at the wide end, and as you zoom, the barrel of the lens does extend out quite a bit. This is similar to other 24-70 zooms, and for photographers, it's not a massive deal, but for more video orientated shooters, internal zooming would have been really nice to make balance more consistent when using it with support equipment like a gimbal. This would more than likely have made the lens much bigger and more expensive though. The lens also has two focus hole buttons, which can also be customised in the menu on your camera and an AF-MF switch. The lens also features a newly designed hood, which now allows you to adjust filters that require rotating, like a variable ND or polarizer, by sliding this little door here. The lens features a new optical design that has 20 elements in 15 groups, with a range of different element designs, which should improve overall performance over the previous generation of lens. Sony have not added any form of lens image stabilization with this new lens, which is a bit of a shame as I feel like this could have been a feature that could have really separated it out even more so from the crowded market of mid-range general purpose zooms for E-mount, and some users of cameras like the FX6 or FX9 would have really appreciated it. The lens features four XD linear motors, which means it is focused by wire, and that isn't surprising as it is what most of Sony's other modern lenses are using now. From our testing, the focus row looks to be somewhere around the 140 to 150 ish degree range, which is pretty good, and the throw also looks pretty consistent and linear, which is exactly what you want for video. Autofocus performance is awesome, and that's not surprising. Tracking is excellent, and when paired with modern Sony cameras, it's an absolute dream to use. This is great, as I feel like Sony autofocus has gotten so good now that there are plenty of people shooting video that want to take advantage of it, and this lens will 100% let you do that. The lens also has an improved close focus over the previous generation, with a minimum focusing distance of roughly 21cm at 24mm through to 35mm, 
and 30 centimeters from 35 to 70 millimeters. The older Sony G Master did not have linear focus motors, and that means that the focus row isn't linear like this new one, so manual focusing on the new one compared to the old G Master is so much better and honestly worth the upgrade alone if you are shooting video and putting focus manually at all. With this new lens being a stills lens, it's not surprising that it isn't perfectly par focal. However, I was actually quite impressed considering it is a stills lens. There are some focus shifts as you zoom, but performance is actually pretty good compared to other 24-70 stills lenses that I have tested in the past. And really, most people will be using autofocus with this lens, and it will then be pretty much par focal. This new lens has been designed for full frame Sony E mount cameras, so we can assume that it has been designed for a regular 36 by 24 mm full frame sensor, which means it should have a rated image circle of roughly 43.467 mm. With the lens being E mount, we can't conduct our regular coverage tests. However, I wanted to illustrate how light changes across your frame as you zoom on the lens. We used a similar testing method to the one used on our lens tool, which you can check out on our website. This means that we shot tests at 24, 35, 50, and 70 millimeters at f2.8 and at f4 at close focus and infinity. For the light difference between the two f-stops, we adjusted our shutter speed, so any light change is the lens changing the amount of light as settings are kept consistent. Starting at 24 millimeters wide open, we can see some fall off in illumination towards the corners of the frame, but as you stop down to f4, we can see that it performs way better here. Though we can see a tiny bit of vignetting right in the corners. Performance at 35 is far better wide open than at 24 mm And from here onwards, performance is good, with only some slight inconsistencies across the frame as you zoom. Unsurprisingly, the lens performs more uniformly towards the longer focal lengths. Overall, you will only really need to be conscious of the vignetting at 24 mm but even then, performance is still really good. This new lens features an 11-bladed circular iris, whereas the Mark I version only had 9, which means the shape of out-of-focus highlights should be better in theory. For our bokeh tests, we shot on an Alpha 1 in its full 8K mode with both the 1 and 2 versions of the 24-70G Master. Looking at the new lens at the wide end first, we can see that the bokeh in the centre of frame is well shaped, though you can tell that the iris is closed a little bit here as it isn't perfectly circular. You can also see misshapen cut bokeh towards the edges of frame as we pan our out of focus highlights to the corners of frame. This effect is consistent as you zoom through the lens but it is slightly better at the wider end. It is also slightly better as you stop down, but it is still present slightly. Throughout the range, our out of focus highlights have a defined edge with a slight green fringe, and you can see some texture throughout the range, which isn't surprising as the lens does use several aspheric elements. The older lens has a very similar look, but has more texture to it, more color fringing, and a slightly more defined and misshapen out of focus highlight. A lens's flare characteristic is an incredibly subjective thing that some may like and some may not. For these examples, we grabbed a torch and blasted it down the barrel of the lens at different focal lengths. Keeping the camera and light in the same place, we can see how the flare changes as we zoom throughout the lens's focal range. Let us know if you like the flare down below. Most Sony cameras have lens compensation built in, and when you have the distortion correction enabled, performance is excellent with barely any visible distortion across its range but I also wanted to see how it performs uncorrected, so I toggled it off in camera and shot the same stills where we can see really how the lens performs optically. There is slight barrel distortion at the wider end, which turns into more pincushion at the longer end, but this isn't awful, and the fact you have a correction in camera is good as it gives you options, and if you're shooting stills, correction in post with raw files is also gonna be really simple. This new lens is compatible with Sony's new lens breathing compensation mode, so if you want no lens breathing at all, but at the expense of a little bit of field of view, you can enable it on cameras that have that feature. However, we wanted to test it without this enabled as there are plenty of Sony cameras that do not have that feature yet. For these tests, we stopped down to f5.6 and shot at 24, 35, 50 and 70 millimeters. We're pulling through the entire focus range in these examples, so this may be a bit more exaggerated than real world use. Performance is actually very good for a lens primarily designed for stills. Throughout the range, we can see only a little bit of breathing, and for shorter pulls, the effect will be minor. The original 24-70G Master was already good optically, 
but this new version is even better. Starting at the wide end in the center of frame, we can see slightly less aberration on the new lens, but similar resolving power. The original version has slightly less aberration in the corner, but worse resolving power as you get towards the corners of frame. At 35mm wide open, the new lens has better center resolving power, but towards the corners, I think the old version has slightly less aberration. This aberration on the new lens is there even when you stop down, but it's incredibly minor. At 50mm, the new lens has better resolving power with less color fringing wide open in the center, as well as the corners. And this is the case even when you stop down to f5.6. At 70mm, the new lens is much better across the frame, even in the center of frame. Resolving power is better, and so are aberrations. At f5.6, performance is similar, though I would say the original version has slightly less color aberration, but it is slightly softer as well. Overall, this new lens performs incredibly well. It's amazing what Sony have achieved optically in such a small lens. If you want the sharpest E-mount 24-70, this new lens is what you want. We did a comparison video last year looking at four different options, including the original G-Master. And our conclusion was that the G-Master was the best optically, but also the largest, heaviest, and most expensive. And the Mark II basically just takes its place, as it is essentially a smaller, lighter, better version of the original G-Master. This new lens has an RRP of £2,100, which is the same as the RRP of the Mark I, but obviously the price of that has gone down a little because of its age now, and it's now more regularly priced at £1,700. £2,100 is expensive, especially when compared to other mid-range general purpose f2.8 zooms on the market. However, I think you are paying a premium for the best optical performance out of the bunch, a well-designed and featured housing, and fantastic reliable autofocus performance. So personally, I can still see professionals wanting the absolute best picking up this lens. But if you are on a budget, the Sigma or Tamron options may be worth looking at. Let us know what you think of the new lens down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.